This versatile and exceptionally portable little smart telescope never ceases to impress me. So thanks very much for joining me here today on Astro Dwarf Adventures. As I said in the intro, this versatile and exceptionally portable little smart telescope never ceases to impress me. So the weather has been rotten here in uh, Edinburgh and Scotland really for the last month since I did my last live stream. We've had nothing but cloud, we've had snow, we've had rain almost every day. Uh, it's just been high winds, my, ho my whole back fence blew right over and blew down. It's just been absolutely horrible, horrible weather. So as a result, try to find any time to do any astro imaging this last month has been a nightmare. So last night there was cloud coming over and then I noticed there was a gap in the clouds, probably going to give me an hour, an hour and a half. And I thought, I want to do some astro imaging. A target I hadn't done yet, impressed with some of the shots that some of my um, viewers and subscribers showed during the live stream that I did a month ago. I wanted to get out, I had a small window of opportunity. This was so quick to set up, as you'll see now coming up in the video, it literally takes a minute to set up and then you're shooting literally within a minute and a half of walking out the door uh, with it. It's it's incredible. It allows you that functionality that perhaps taking the time to roll out a big telescope set up, the cameras, the computers, all the rest of it. It was a really small window of opportunity I had last night. I said, literally after an hour and a half, the cloud was back over again. So I had clear skies for about an hour and a half. There was no wind, it had died down enough. And I thought, I'm gonna nip out quickly and see if I can get a nice shot. So here we go, let's have a look at this. So here we are, we're launching the Dwarf 2 app and connecting to the telescope. This is a pretty straightforward endeavour, um, made easier with the new software. Okay, and we're just going to push um, to connect into the imaging side of the software. I'm doing a quick autofocus here. So here we're doing an autofocus, um, it works exceptionally well, it's a little bit slower than the last version of software but works exceptionally well. Here we're in features, I'm now pushing calibration to calibrate the telescope so it knows where it is in the world, it's basically plate solving. Uh, if your autofocus is good it really just has no problem doing this at all now. Now we're going into the catalogue, I'm choosing Galaxy. M61. Now it's slewing to uh, the target and that was again pretty straightforward. I'm going to go back into features now where I'm going to set the number of subs I want to take. Now originally I'd set 300. Um, there's just, I always find the slight issue with this software, if there is any, is when you then sort of scroll the screen up, which I do here, just to double check I'm on 4K. Um, you accidentally move that slider again, it just seems to be exactly the right place to be moved. But as it turned out, uh, 114 subs was fine, because with the cloud coming over, I, I literally had half an hour, an hour, um, and the short exposure, I think it's about 28 and a half minutes here, uh, it's just fine anyway. But I'm setting the exposure to 15 seconds, and I'm setting the gain at 100. And as you see, I've started imaging as quick as that. So once it's taken a couple of images, you'll get your first stacked image. And then we'll get our first look at M61. Get properly, there it is coming up now. So I'm gonna speed up the imaging and I'm gonna run through the stack a bit quicker, obviously, so that you're not gonna wait as long. Here you see, I'm just adjusting the light curves just to give it a bit more contrast, darken the background, lighten the foreground, the main objects just a little, and now we're going to run through this stack. So we sped this up quite a lot, uh, I think about 30 times or so, just so you're not waiting as long. I do enjoy watching the stack develop and the image becoming more prolific and getting better resolution on our target, in this case M61. Obviously, you see the little sister galaxy there below. There's a few small smudges, which will be galaxies as well. But you see this object is developing nicely. At the end, I'll actually give you a nice close-up of it with a, just after a little bit of post-processing. Just before I 
do the post processing you can see here that i'm just playing with the light curves i should mention if you don't like it if you've done something wrong you can just push reset and it just gives you that linear line uh, for your rgb as well and all again was doing was just contrasting the background against the foreground object and this as you see is the finished object after just a little bit of post processing just using my phone actually this was just done in gallery and that's all there is to that so it's lovely so as you can see in really just you know a very short time i was able to get this straight on it i've got the telescope focused i got the telescope calibrated so i knew where it was in the world it had done its plate solving straight on to using the um star target catalog within the app i was able to quickly find my target and, and slew straight to my target and start imaging my target. Even the setting up, you know, choosing whether it was 2K or 4K, your, your file format, the number of uh, subs you want to take, the length of exposure, the gain, really straightforward in the new software. I was absolutely brilliant. I was so impressed with how quick I was actually imaging. I think I started imaging within two, un, honestly, it must have been under two minutes of walking out the back door and you know, what other setup allows you to do that that quickly at this price point and give you the quality of image um, that you saw there. You know, the post processing I did in that was just on my phone, literally just on my Samsung Galaxy. So just using the, the, the gallery app and the photo edit in there, I quickly just played a little bit with contrast and sharpness and maybe a little bit about the, the tint and the saturation. And that was it, just the bare minimum you know, completely free post-processing done on my phone. I'm going to do a video on post-processing using, probably using Photo Affinity 2, if not Zero. And that might end up being a collaboration video with another YouTuber. I'll, I'll talk about that some other video. So there's another thing I want to mention as well. During that last live stream, I did a prize draw giveaway. I did a prize draw for... Um, there was a th three prizes, I think third prize was a UHC filter, second prize was a UHC filter and two solar filters, these were all provided and donated by Dwarf Lab and first place was this Dwarf 2 telescope. So third and second prizes have been claimed, first prize winner I've tried to contact them, I've left them messages, I've even put in, a, in another video that they should try and contact me and they haven't. So that entrant to that prize, this prize for first prize uh, is gone. Uh, I, you know, it's been over a month and they still haven't contacted me. I even replied to their message, the one that was r picked randomly and says, you are, you know, a prize draw winner, please contact me. And they never have. So for that reason, the Dwarf 2 telescope is going up for grabs again. So watch out for my next video when I'm going to tell you how you can win one of these and this is only for my viewers and subscribers not for anyone else so if you watch that video and you qualify um, and it'll be again very very easy to qualify you will potentially win this telescope completely free donated by dwarf lab so watch out for that next video the dwarf 2 telescope up for grabs again so watch out for my next video where you get details of that so to wrap things up i hope you really enjoyed the video Again, really, really easy, as you see, to set this up. Very, very easy to start shooting. It really never ceases to impress me. Both the telescope and the software, Dwarf Lab keep innovating. You know, the hardware is kind of the hardware until they bring out the Dwarf 3, whatever that might be. But this Dwarf 2, there's a lot more we can get out of this using further innovations in the software. And I know Dwarf Lab are constantly innovating and trying to bring out bigger and better software to allow this telescope to do even more. So watch this space. I'm sure they'll get there very, very soon. Hope you enjoyed this video and please make sure you do watch out for the next one where I'll be doing the prize draw giveaway for a Dwarf 2 telescope donated by Dwarf Lab. Um, and that should be a good video as well with some other great content. So again, thanks very much for joining me. You know, it's always appreciated. If you haven't already, please like this video uh, if you've enjoyed the content and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already there's something like 60 percent of people who watch my videos aren't subscribed so they're going to miss future content so with that i'm going to wrap this video up i'd just like to say thanks very much again for watching this video and don't forget to look up because you just don't know what you're going to see thanks very much take care guys